All right guys, so today I want to demonstrate how to properly adjust your torsion bar suspension. I'll be demonstrating this with my 1969 Dodge Charger project car I've been working on for the past year and a half. So if you haven't watched any of the videos on this car, definitely go check out the playlist on this thing. So basically what I'd like to do is you know, show you how to properly adjust it. But before we do that, I want to consider the significance of torsion bar suspension and really demonstrate how it works. There's a lot of misconception on what it does and what it really is. So let's go ahead and get to that. This method was really popularized around World War II, actually before so in the 30s, but Chrysler is really the most known for the torsion bar suspension. There are other manufacturers who use it, uh, Chevy trucks use it, a lot of uh, full-size vehicles do use it, but Chrysler was the one who really is known for that. They're known for very smooth riding, easy to adjust, and that's why they're so popular with these cars. So what I've rigged up here is a throttle return spring set up in my vise, locked in. So just to demonstrate what it is, the torsion bar is actually a bar that runs from right here in the back. As you can see right here, there is actually a support built into my charger where it locks into place. This side is stationary. Up here, we have free range of motion where it's locked into our lower control arm. So pretend that this angle here is our lower control arm on the suspension. Being that this side on the rear is locked into place and this side can rotate, when we come over a bump, our suspension travels, but it comes back down. So we have hard shock, comes right back into place. And that's basically the simplest way to explain how this torsion bar system works. So this is really your coilover suspension built into a single bar. And that's how it works. The bar itself actually flexes in order to create suspension and then you have a shock to accompany it for any kind of like major absorption that it needs. So you can see that when we come over to a bump, comes back down. If the front suspension comes over a gap where it's unloaded, comes right back to where it needs to be. So we have full range of motion with our lower control arm, and that is what will give us our really smooth ride because it's very easy to adjust, easy to set the ride height, and you can make it whatever you want. So if you have the, the suspension way too low, you're going to be running into your bump stops. If you have it way too high, you're going to have your suspension really just out of whack. Your camber is going to be uh, way out of alignment. So whenever you are doing these adjustments, you really need to consider that you're going to have to get a realignment if you go for way too much of an adjustment. I've seen a lot of uh, full-size trucks that have torsion bar suspension that have been really turned up and that causes your wheels to tilt out. So I'm gonna demonstrate why I tell you guys that you really need to consider getting an alignment whenever you adjust your torsion bars. What I've made here is a simulation of our upper control arm, lower control arm, and our spindle bolted to our wheel. So here's our upper, lower, spindle, wheel. When you raise the suspension, which is by tightening the bolt on the adjustment, these control arms are only a certain length. They can't extend or retract based on what you have your suspension set up to unless you have fully adjustable everything. So, whenever you raise your suspension, your ride height comes up, but your wheel is going to be sitting at an angle. That means your camber is going to be tilted outward or have a lot of positive camber. Let's say we're going to lower the car. When you lower the car, we now have a lot of negative camber. This is going to increase tread wear, it's going to be uneven tread wear, and you really want to make sure that you have an alignment done properly after you get it done. You really want your wheel to be sitting however you have it. So you lower it, you want your wheel to be adjusted properly with the control arm adjustment bolts on the top side to really kind of figure out where you need the wheel to be. So definitely make sure you're checking your alignment after you do any kind of adjustments. Even the smallest amount of adjustment can throw the alignment out of whack. So get your ride height set where you want it to before you even think about going to get an alignment. I definitely highly recommend getting an alignment before you do so. 
definitely be safe when you're doing stuff like this. Make sure you jack the car up and secure it and make sure it's not going to fall on you. So do this at your own risk. I'm not liable for anything that happens to you when you adjust your torsion bars. And this is only applicable to this vehicle. This may be different on your car. So we've got the car jacked up on jack stands. Here you can see the upper control arm as mentioned. And below that, here's our spindle, which bolts to our wheel. And then this is our lower control arm. Our torsion bar is actually behind this. So now we'll come up under the vehicle, look up under the car, and you can see this is where the torsion bar is locked into place. As I mentioned, it stays stationary in the rear, and it travels all the way up to our control arm where I showed you before. Here's where it locks into the control arm itself. Like I said, this is the lower control arm, and you can see that it actually is locked by a hexagon shape. This is what's going to keep it from rotating inside the control arm itself. So, as you can see, there's our lower control arm spindle right here. That's our upper control arm. So now let's show you how to actually adjust it. So back under the front of the car, you can see there's a bolt that is sticking out of the bottom of the lower control arm. What this does, whenever you tighten it, it's going to raise a lever that actually twists the torsion bar. Now, you remember how in the spring, whenever it would torsion, that would actually lift the car up? Whenever you have it under load, it's going to raise the car. That's why when you tighten it, your torsion bar will raise the ride height. When you back up this bolt, as you see I have it here, it's going to lower the car because you're taking the tension off of the torsion bar. It's actually untwisting, making the suspension settle because the torsion bar is not under load. Since I want to raise my car up, all I'm going to do is take this socket and ratchet. And in my case, it is a three-quarter. Put it on the bolt and tighten it up. What I'm doing is, like I said, raising this pivot point on this lever that is actually inside the control arm, which will tilt downward and cause the torsion bar to have tension on it. So whenever I want to lower the car, it's easy as going in the opposite direction. Loosen it back up. And that's going to lower the car. Very easy process but it's very important to understand how the suspension works. So you've adjusted your ride tight on the torsion bar and you really need to see the effects of it. When you lower the car back on the ground, you're like, well, it looks the exact same as what I did. The way to do this is to actually flex the suspension. If you can't drive the vehicle, one thing you can do is to push down on the fender or the bumper to make the suspension travel and flex. The best way to do it, though, is to actually take the car on a short drive. That'll really get the suspension to flex and travel the way that it needs to so it'll settle in place where it's going to sit whenever you finish your adjustments. And then you can really tell the effects. So if you raise the car, your wheels are probably going to be tilted out like that. If you lower it, they'll probably be tilted in. So my biggest takeaway, always get in alignment after you adjust your torsion bars. So that'll do it for today's video, guys. I really hope this helped you understand how torsion bar suspension worked and how to adjust it properly. Like I said, this isn't going to apply to every single vehicle that has torsion bar suspension, but maybe it'll give you a better idea of how to adjust it and what to do. So thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a like down below. If you have any questions for me, feel free to leave a comment. If you want, you can send me an email to be at the very end of the video. You can ask a question there, or you can send in your projects to be put in the very end of the video. Order your t-shirts and your stickers, guys. And we're getting this car ready for power tour. If you have, Like I said, if you haven't watched any of the videos on this car, I have a playlist going on on my channel, all in the car from the day I got it. So if you like what you see, please go check it out. And I appreciate every single one of you, and I'll see you in the next one.